Today we are going to be making these fun and easy vintage looking pockets perfect for ephemera, sharing, adding to your journals, uh, note taking, uh, and even mailing. These layered envelopes are super fun to make and we hope that you will join us in the process. Now these actually are um, something that I had promised. Uh, some of our friends and customers that join us during the live sales here on our channel. If you've never joined us for one of our live sales, do make sure that you join us because they are a lot of fun. And during those live sales, we actually share and sell products like this one. For example, the inspiration for this project were these amazing peon um, paper line sheets. They're 12 by 12s and they have all of these super great images. We import them from Sweden for our online store as well as our live sales. Anyway, during our live sale, I had um, shared that I was going to be working with these and so I had promised to do a video. So we are going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to put together these great, fun, layered embellished pockets. So if you purchased these from us already and you have them in your stash, it is time to break them out. Let's get to creating. And if you're interested in purchasing them, I will put the links to all the products down in the description box below. In step one, we are going to cut out the images. We can choose whether we want them frameless like these here. So we've left no border, no white on the outside, or we can leave a little bit of that cream um, color border around them like these. Either look will work just fine for the project we have in mind today. In step two, we are going to be gathering our supplies. We are going to start with the peon images that we just cut from our 12 by 12 sheets. Then we're going to need some music sheet, some music paper. So take a look around in your stash. We'll need some five by seven envelopes or larger if you'd like. And then we're going to need a faux stitch stamp. Now in the beginning, I started by using the Tim Holtz um, stamp but I switched gears later because I like the other one better and I'll share with that with you in a bit. Some mandala wooden buttons as well as some vellum ephemera or embellishments. These little books are fabulous because they have a lot of images. And again, I'm going to be providing links to all of the products that I have in the store available for you guys in case you see anything that you like. However, I always encourage you guys to take a look around at your stash as well, right? Shop your stash because um, you might have something similar already in your stash. Then we're going to need some postcards. Now these are smaller, a bit smaller than regular size as well as some white tickets. And we have ticket packs in the store which have like 10 different colors, I think. Some beautiful trim. This flower trim we also have in multiple colors if you're interested. As well as a piece of decorative paper. And those will be all the items that we will need in order to do our layering. In step three, we are going to use our music paper and punch out some circles. I am using a one and a half inch punch. Uh, you might have perhaps some dies that you can use if you do not have a punch or maybe something you can trace around and then just cut by hand. Maybe like a large cap uh, or uh, a cup or something that you can trace around, but we are going to need some circles. In step four, we are going to punch up our decorative paper. I happen to have this scallop punch. You might have something different. Uh, once again, look around in your stash or take a look around in our store. We have lots of dies available um, in all kinds of different fun shapes. In step five, we are going to prepare our embellishments. So we have a little bit more prepping to do. For example, here I'm cutting just a little bit, maybe like a sixth of the bottom of my circles off. 
that is just so that they can lay flat on the bottom of our envelope but again you can do this now uh, or you can choose to do it once you adhere them down to your envelope later on i'm also going to be distressing just about everything our circles my scallops uh, images they are those little punches i'm also going to be distressing my tickets um, what else the um, postcards the peon images that we cut of course and later on i'm even going to be distressing the envelopes as well so yes distressing i think lends a whole lot of finishing and just those special touches to your project so i will be distressing pretty much all of the items that i'm going to be using prior to de-stressing my peon photo images i am going to round off my corners that is a completely optional step of course you can see just how wonderful they look either way is fine whether it's a straight um, cut or a rounded corner whether it has a frame and border around it like these do or the other ones that don't but i think that the stressing them rounding the corners is just a really nice touch now i wanted to touch up on the fact that one of the th reasons why i like to kind of get all of my stuff prepped ahead of time is it allows me to then be able to be creative almost in an assembly line format right all the materials are ready to go and all i need to do then is get to working on decorating which is a super fun part in step six we are going to work with the envelopes these of course are the base to our project they're going to be the base as well as the pocket so the first thing we're going to do is cut the envelopes in half right down the center right down the middle uh, again mine are a five by seven yours might be the same or a little bit larger right and we're just going to cut them in half after that we are going to take the top flap of our envelope we are going to add adhesive only to the top flap and then we're going to tuck that in and glue that on the inside of our envelope or half an envelope at this point. We are just gonna tuck it and glue it on the inside. with all of our flaps now glued and tucked safely inside of our envelope slash pocket, we are going to work on that half of a side that is still open. We're going to add adhesive and simply press that down. This will now close our pocket on those three sides, but give us a really cool slanted side as you can see as well. Now taking inspiration from the peon images, you can see that some of them, not all of them, but some of them have the uh, very light pink and a very light blue tint to them. With that in mind, I am going to be using two oxide colors and bringing in a very light faint color wash of those two colors to some of our envelopes. I did some of them with the oxides and then I left a few without the oxides to show you what both looks would look like and you might prefer one over the other or you might want to do some this way and some that, kind of like what I did.
and here you can see up close what the speckled egg will look like again a very soft vintage color and then I'm going to bring in our pink by introducing the Victorian velvet which is again going to give us a really soft vintage color again perfectly matching the tints in those photos With our color all done, we are going to make sure that we really dry our bases because remember, we're going to be distressing the edges once again, um, just like we have with everything else. And all distress products have a wicking property. So you don't want to um, add anything before your envelopes are really dry. Plus, of course, they might also, you know, tear. Uh, wet paper tends to tear, so we wanna make sure we are nice and dry. And look how great those are looking. With our bases all done, it is time for step number seven, and that is layering. This is where that playtime now comes in. All the creative juices are flowing. You have all of your materials ready to go. So now we are just going to have fun layering. I am going to leave some of this here for you guys to be able to see how I've done my layering process and hopefully find some inspiration from that.
and we now have a completed layered pocket. Isn't that just so sweet and vintage looking? It still has some color, but it's very vintage, soft looking. With that done, it is now time to bring in the final step, and that is the faux stitching. I really think this makes the project just takes it over to the next level. And for that, I'm gonna be using this stamp set right here. I have mentioned to you in the beginning of the video that I had first attempted to use the Tim Holtz um, stitching on the prototypes, and I just found it to be a little too heavy for these projects. Again, these are very dainty. They're on the smaller uh, or medium, smaller to medium size project and I thought it needed something a little bit more delicate. So these are super great to use for this. And I'll put the link to this down in the description box because I really think this is one of those stamps that just about everybody needs to have in their stash. Um, you don't always wanna break out the sewing machine or some of you might not have a sewing machine. And in this case, you can still add that great stitch look without having to do any sewing. The other neat thing about this um, stamp set is the fact that it comes with multiple stitches. If I'm not mistaken, it's six or seven different stitches that it comes with, which is great because you can mix and match them too. And here we have our completed pocket. So super cute, fun, and easy to make. Now I've made several different kinds as I had mentioned. Um, I did some with and without color. These, all I did was distress them. So they have no added color as far as the inks are concerned. It is just the envelope itself with distressing around the edges. And you can see that even plain, they look absolutely cute. These here on this side, I actually did with the oxides. So again, that soft washed color to them, just a little bit of that tint of the, you know, the Victorian colors, that pink and that blue, super fun as well. So either way, again, you can do some this way, some that way, and you can also see the two different stitches. This one has the Tim Holtz stitch, which as I mentioned, is a little bit heavier versus the one on the right that has the other stitch set, that stamp set that I showed you earlier that I'll link below, and that is a much softer look. We hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. We hope that you will give it a try, and we do hope that you give this video a thumbs up as well as leave us a comment down below. You guys have a great day. Thank you for joining us here in the Spectrum Art Creation Studio. Bye now.